Meteorologist Danielle Noyes here for the One Degree Outside Weather Network. Hope you had a great weekend. Monday Insights. Here's what we'll cover. Cool onshore flow. Wettest day this week on Thursday. Drying out on Halloween. We'll have the trick-or-treating forecast. Category 5 Hurricane Melissa bearing down on Jamaica. Bigger impacts than that. I want to show you the tropical satellite first. We have had three Category 5 hurricanes this season. The only other season that that has happened in is 2005, which was, of course, the record-breaking season. Look at the eye of Melissa as of this recording, sitting south-southwest of Jamaica. She is such a slow mover. That's one of the issues, obviously, with her strength and power is that she's crawling along. So localized mudslides, catastrophic wind damage. We're talking surge coming in, long duration outages that will last for months as she eventually makes a curve off to the north and northeast. So the question is, will she remain a Category 5 or Category 4 as she makes landfall in Jamaica? Jamaica has had five major hurricanes that have hit the island directly, but only one Category 4 hurricane, never a Category 5. And that Category 4 last hurricane to strike the island was Gilbert in 1988. So Melissa will cross Jamaica, the worst wind tonight into Tuesday, then cross eastern Cuba during the day tomorrow into Wednesday morning. Over the southeast Bahamas is still a Category 2 storm by the time we get to Wednesday afternoon. And then we'll move away from the Bahamas during the day on Wednesday evening and night, taking aim actually the center of the cone of probability right near Bermuda and likely to still be a strong hurricane at that point, not major, but Category 2 or 1 and then a leftover tropical storm increased surf and swell up and down the eastern seaboard. So you can track Melissa and any tropical system right in our app, actually. The interactive radar has tropical overlays, bunch of different stuff you can toggle off and on. So give that a try. Our app is free. Thousands of five-star reviews. Meantime, here at home, we've got high pressure in eastern Canada and a couple different waves of low pressure going by to our south. So in between these two, we've got that funneled northeast wind that will take hold for our Tuesday. So a gusty breeze at the coast, some coastal clouds and that marine layer coming in. So it's kind of a changeable day, or I should say a split day across New England. Sunshine for our Tuesday and Wednesday in a lot of the northern half of New England, but some clouds in southern New England in particular. And with that onshore flow, maybe some pockets of drizzle, a shower or two may come in off the ocean, particularly for Cape Cod, the south shore as well, Tuesday into Wednesday. So just definitely kind of a cool, raw feel. During the day on Thursday, there will be some showers around out ahead of the heaviest band of rain, which does look like it will shift through from west to east Thursday during the afternoon and evening. Heavy downpours, some localized flooding, street flooding, urban flooding, with leaves covering some of the drains or maybe some spots that flood. And that's, again, Thursday afternoon to evening. There may be a few rumbles of thunder in there, too. That pushes off to the north and east so that by Friday morning, the bulk of the heaviest rain is done. In fact, by Friday afternoon, a lot of us are drying out. Some breaks of sun emerge. There may still be a few showers in the mountains with that kind of lift coming over the mountains and actually enough cold air that we may switch to some snowflakes for Friday night into Saturday and the highest elevations of northern New England. In fact, for those that are excited about winter and the snow flying, there may be as much as a couple inches of accumulation. Again, timing of this would be Friday night into Saturday with some snow showers, particularly in northern New York and then right along the Canadian border. Think Mount Washington, too. So according to a couple of inches, you'll see some of those flakes flying. In terms of rainfall, Matt talked about this in Sunday Evening Essentials. It does look like a widespread one to three inch rainfall event. No big changes there. Notice most spots one to two inches, maybe some locally higher amounts, especially if we can get some enhancement in eastern New England. So it's a good dose that comes in. Again, most of it falls later on Thursday and into Thursday night before it pushes out of here on Friday. So high temperatures for our Tuesday, generally running in the low to mid 50s, that northeast wind 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusting higher along the coast. Tuesday night, it's widespread 20s in northern New England, chilly 30s for most of the rest of us to lower 40s with some of those clouds in far southern New England, that onshore flow continuing. So a couple pockets of showers and drizzle. Very similar Wednesday, the clouds in place in southern, uh, southeastern New England. Lots of sunshine through the interior of northern New England, but a cool, crisp fall day running in the low to mid-50s for most of us again. Very similar during the day on Thursday, although it is more of an easterly component of the wind that will shift to the southeast, and we'll look at that in a second. Most spots in the mid to upper 50s. So it's a cooler-than-average pattern this week. Friday's 
generally running 55 to 60 with the heaviest rain pushing out of here early. Let's talk wind. It will be breezy during the day on Tuesday at the coast, 20 to 30 mile per hour winds, uh, especially from Boston back down to the Cape. So a noticeable breeze, definitely adding a little chill to the air. Very similar on Wednesday. Not much through the interior, 10 to 20 miles per hour. But again, at the coast, particularly for the south shore back down to the Cape, we got 20 to 30 miles per hour. Then look at this, some of the yellows and oranges that show up on Thursday, coinciding with the heaviest rain and downpours, we may be able to transport some of that wind down to the surface. So in general, I'd say some 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts. An isolated gust 40 to 50 is possible here, you notice, from the Berkshires stretching back up the spine of the Green Mountains. Again, Thursday afternoon to early evening, most spots gust about 30 to isolated 40 miles per hour as that band of heavy rain pushes through. Biggest thing for Friday on Halloween is that wind shifts directions, but it will be windy about 20 to 30 miles per hour. So adding a chill out there, for those cities and towns that do have trick-or-treating for the kiddos, there may be a leftover shower, but in general, we're drying out. Temperatures will be in the upper 40s towards the start of trick-or-treating and then gradually cool off. But the wind is going to be like 15 to 25 miles per hour. So you can knock about 5 to 10 degrees off these temperatures. That's what you want to dress for. So it's not a year where the kids can get away with nothing underneath or not an extra layer to keep them warm for trick-or-treating time. A lot of clouds around and temperatures probably feeling right around 40 degrees for a New England wide average. If you like our content, you can get more and help support our mission. We've got four membership levels to choose from. All the details on each one and how to sign up is at membership.1degreeoutside.com.